The video today is on brush use and brush care. And these are some of the different types of brushes that we use in our classroom. Um, hopefully you will get to experience some type of these brushes. Uh, I always like to use a pretty good brush because when you're using good brushes, then you're gonna get good results in the end. Um, this one is what's called, the two kinds of brushes that we use mostly are a flat and a round. And these are my two favorite and the two brushes that I use quite frequently with students in my class. A flat brush is simply the, the hairs or the bristles are clinched in the metal, flat, and they all, the hairs all lay flat in a nice flat row. Where the round, the metal, is, le is wrapped in a circle, right in here, shape, so that the hairs form a point, rounded, so the shape is actual rounded here, where this is actually flat. So that's the difference in the two. When you're using the flat, oh, first of all, when you use the brush, this is, let me, let me show you that first. To actually use a brush, you don't hold it by the handle here. I, see, I often see kids doing this, and it's like they're afraid, afraid of something. They hold it way up here, where you're not gonna have good brush control. I always say, get up down near the metal and hold it just like you hold a pencil and hold it straight up in the air so that the tip of the brush is facing the ceiling. So you have good full control. You don't have much control like this, and it, that's in both cases. Now some brushes are shorter, just like this round one. This is a shorter brush. So when we use our brush, we hold it just like a pencil, and then we go ahead and draw with it. Now, if you're gonna use watercolor, or when you're washing and wetting the brushes, what you do is you go into your water dish or bowl, and you stir it, you're gonna stir it vigorously. You know, a little gentle stir like this is not gonna clean that brush. So you stir it vigorously, like you're stirring chocolate milk. And then when you're done, dry it on the edge. Just one or two, two wipes. And all I did was take and draw. I'm just drawing with the brush on the inside of the cup and then releasing it at the top. Uh, you can dry it even on a paper towel. And when you dry on a paper towel, wash and dry. I draw down and then I turn the brush around and draw it on the other side. So I wash and dry the brush. In some cases, you want the brush a little wet, say if you're gonna go into a watercolor paint. So I wet the brush and I then go into my color and I swirl gently into the color. Now this color is really pretty powerful, so I'm just swirling gently. And then what's happening is the, the actual pigments of the color are going on the bottom and absorbing up into the, the hairs of the brush. Then when I go ahead and paint, I, I can paint in my nice straight lines, letting my hair drag behind the brush. So I can get a nice straight line like that. And if I'm gonna fill in, I can say if I'm gonna paint something, I, I would outline it first, say I wanna paint this shape, and then I can go ahead and fill in, letting the hairs drag behind. And I can get more water barely touching the water. And if I wanna make it even lighter on this edge, I can just add water to this paint here. So I can go from a dark to a lighter area. Sometimes you want that shade and gradation in color. Okay, so there's my tip. Now, say I have to do, and this round small brush is great for skinny lines. I'm losing some color, let me load up a little bit more. I wanna to barely touch the water and go back into my color. So this thin brush is great for skinny lines. I can go fat and then by pressing and then I can gradually go up to get a skinny tip. So I have a variety of lines, but my line is never gonna can get fatter than that. Fatter than the width of my barrel here, of, of my brush. Now, say I'm done with the brush, wash, dry on the dish, one, two, that just releases extra drops and then dry on a paper towel and then I lay it flat to dry. I never wanna dry my brushes like this with the hairs up with the hairs down rather, and in, a, in a jar, because this is gonna ruin the hair here, and it'll end up drying like that. This other brush, this flat one, wash, dry the same way. Now this is a much bigger brush than this. This is going to hold more paint. The thinner brush and smaller brush is great for small areas, details, you know, going in, putting your ears on, patterns on top of something once you've painted it. But this one is good for filling in big areas, large areas in our background. Say I have a big elephant to paint or a, 
a body of a giraffe, well then I need room to paint. I need more brush stroke to paint and much wider. So I go ahead and use this. This is a good filling brush. And what this brush does is I can get two different things from this brush. I can get a thin line from this brush and a thick line. My, my thick line is just simply holding the brush just like I would a pencil, drawing with it, making sure the tip is facing toward the ceiling, and I gently let the hairs drag behind. And you can see the difference between this width and this width. This is the fattest width I can get from this brush, this round, small brush. So this is a great filling in brush if I want big areas and I can just go back and forth letting the hairs drag behind. Watch the hair on this brush. I'm gonna get some paint off of here. I let it go. I bend, give the bend of the brush. It's a nice bounce here. This brush is a beautiful bounce. So I can get a thick, wide line and then I can flip it back and then I go back to the same stroke to even it out letting the hairs drag behind and then I can go back and forth quickly and then it fills in nice and evenly so I get a nice even coverage if I did something like this I am not you see that I'm scrubbing with this brush I'm not getting look at the strokes I'm not getting an even coverage like I did before. I'm just kind of scrubbing all around like I would scrub my floor of the house. You don't want to do it like that. First of all, you're going to ruin the hairs by smashing. Look at those hairs. Oh my gosh. Those hairs are flying all around. That is ruining that brush. And in some cases, the more you do that, you're never going to get back that beautiful lineup of hair. And you don't want to ruin that lineup. A good brush is going to make a good painting. A brush that's all shabby and ruined can never make a beautiful painting. You always want to treat these brushes with respect and treat them nicely so that all the hairs line up and they have this beautiful, beautiful bounce to it. Then when you go to paint, you're going to be able to make gorgeous, beautiful lines with no trouble if you treat your brushes with respect. You see that? And if I want it even, I can, I can make it all even and smooth. Oops, I picked up some color. Then I can add my other colors for blending and value right on top. And I mean, I can just have a great time with these beautiful brushes. But treat the brushes the way you would want to be treated and treat them with respect. Wash, dry the brush when you're done, dry it over here, and then take care of them. Um, this last brush, this is a fan brush, and this is used for... Um, you know, textures, different techniques, great for filling in big areas if you're going to paint ceramics. It also does a really gorgeous bushes, plants. You might have seen some uh, artists on TV demonstrating. This makes great, you know, bushes and trees. Um, these are real expensive brushes. So, you, so usually in schools, we use them sparingly because they're really easy to ruin and they are very, very expensive. But that's what a fan brush is. I just wanted to show you that. You can also make, this is also great for grasses. Let me clear my paper and get another one here. This makes absolutely beautiful, effortless grass, grass textures. So it's really great for that too. And this is actually a really large fan brush. They come in small, small as well. Um, but there's a lot of uses for this. And a lot of artists really enjoy it. I like it because it fills paper fast fills big areas fast because it's got a big spread. And this is actually a natural hair bristle fan right here. Okay. Thank you.